we finally made it to the end of our initial Commander 2016 review. I know it's taken a while, but I've saved the most volatile deck for last. Entropic Uprising brings with it several valuable cards, a unique and interesting commander, along with a color combination that would make any magic player drool. It's time to take a look at the Whitelist Commander deck. Before we do that, however, if you've missed our Commander 2016 coverage up to this point, you can check out our previous reviews right here, all of them right at your fingertips, super easy. Now, without further ado, let's uh, let's jump into the Maelstrom. Entropic Uprising is led by Yidris, Maelstrom Wielder. One blue, one black, one red, and one green for a 5-4 legendary creature Ogre Wizard with Trample. Whenever Yidris deals combat damage to a player as you cast spells from your hand this turn, they gain Cascade. Cascade, for those who don't know, is a mechanic that says, quote, when you cast this spell, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card that costs less. You may cast it without paying its mana cost. Put the exiled cards in the bottom of your library in a random order. What I just read, that goes on to every single spell you cast after Yidris deals combat damage to a player. For instance, Yidris triggers, now all your spells have Cascade. Then you cast Terminate. When you cast this, you start revealing cards from the top of your library until you reveal a spell that has a casting cost less than 2. Let's say you find a Brainstorm. Boom. Brainstorm gets cast right then, for free. Needless to say, Cascade is a powerful mechanic. Let me be clear when I say this. Entropic Uprising is unlike any other Commander 2016 pre-con. It is a spell-based, power-hungry strategy that looks to cast gigantic spells that will then let you cast other gigantic spells. Out of the box, this is probably the most difficult deck to play without understanding the general synergies or what the deck is trying to do. Which I guess is why I'm here. Huh. I guess that works out. Anyways, Yidris himself is a genius. Dealing combat damage to a player to get his trigger is annoying, but he's a 5-4 and trample is going to make it way easier to trigger. So now that you've dealt damage, the entire goal of the deck is to abuse Cascade, using the mechanic to punish your opponents in multiple ways. Let's explore that now. The partner commanders in the deck are top-notch, probably my favorite out of any Commander 2016 deck. Vile Smasher the Fierce is a solid inclusion in this strategy, looking to take advantage of the giant spells you're going to cast once your Cascade triggers online. Easy synergy there. Vile Smasher is the card that works the best with the address directly, but the other two partner commanders are amazing enablers for the rest of the deck. Three COs, Triton Hero, and the Chosen to Crew Fix are both support partner commanders. Three Cios is going to help ramp you or draw you more cards, and in a deck like this with a ton of high mana cost spells, you're going to need that. Same goes with the Chosen. While she only adds mana based on how many cards you've drawn this turn, I promise you, this deck has a way of drawing a ton of cards. As you see the deck unfold, keep these two commanders in mind. They're both just genius includes. Again, Yidris is all about getting in for damage, triggering Cascade on everything, then casting all the spells. To do that, we're going to need a lot of land, and we're going to need it fast. The deck comes with Coiling Oracle, Seder Wayfinder, the aforementioned Triton Hero, and Wall of Blossoms for some card draw. This deck isn't all that fast, so Wall of Blossoms light cards, they're useful. Normally we continue talking only about creatures, but this deck's value is tied to both creatures and spells, so we're going to attack both at once. Yidris is trying to cascade huge spells into other huge spells. In Garrick's Wake, Army of the Damned, Blood Tyrant, and Whims of the Fates are just four of the gigantic spells in this deck looking to cascade into each other. While there are a few other just giant spells, most of the spells in the deck do have a purpose. Now let's talk synergy. One sub-theme of the deck is instant and sorceries matter. We're looking to cast a lot of spells and use those in our graveyard for even more synergy. We have Academy Elite, Spellheart Chimera, Spell Twine, and Past in Flames. As you may have already noticed, we don't only care about instants and sorceries in our graveyard, we care about them in everyone's graveyard. Another powerful sub-theme in this deck? Massive card draw and discard. Nath of the Guilt Leaf, Runehorn Hellkite, Dragon Mage, Reforge of the Soul. Wheel of Fortune effects are all over the place. We also have Whispering Madness, Windfall, Wheel of Fate, and Consuming Aberration. So now that we have all these incredibly powerful discard effects, how do we use them to our advantage? Oh man, prepare yourselves. Sangromancer will give us a million life. Guilt Feeder could end up being a win condition if we're being completely honest, which is just bonkers. 
Ghastly Conscription is not only a giant cascade target, but also a way to manifest a large portion of an opponent's graveyard. That's hilarious. And Waste Knot is going to give us mana, zombies, or cards no matter what. Think about it. Waste Knot on the battlefield, you cast Reforge the Soul against three other players. Can you imagine what you're going to be left with? That's amazing. This is definitely the biggest theme in the deck, draw discard. It's absolutely phenomenal. The rest of the deck is a lot of removal, a few cascade spells, and ways to keep you alive. Parting Thoughts, Decimate, Bituminous Blast, and Curtain's Call will do a great job at ripping your opponents to pieces. In addition to the Blast, you get a few cascade staples in Bloodbraid Elf and Ethereum Horn Sorcerer, along with Gamekeeper, who doesn't technically have cascade, but basically has creature cascade. Gamekeeper is a sweet card, that's a nice include in this precon. Since you are a control deck to a certain degree, as in it'll take you a while to get going, there are some solid blue control spells for you. Chain of Vapor, Evacuation, and Devastation tied are all great spells, perfect for delaying your downfall and filling up your opponent's hands so they have to discard. It's a nice, simple synergy. I will say my absolute favorite synergy in the entire deck, like the whole thing, Yidris and Treasure Cruise. Cascade only cares about converted mana cost. It doesn't care about how much you paid to cast a spell. Delve does not affect it, which means exactly what you think it does. Yidris triggers Cascade on everything. You can cast Treasure Cruise on the cheap and get a giant Cascade. Gotta love cards that just work together. Oh, that's delicious. One final thing before we talk upgrades. There is some decent value in the deck. Entropic Uprising comes with Past in Flames, Burgeoning, and Chromatic Lantern. All cards that are worth way more than bulk. Always good to know you're getting some value. Now, all in all, Entropic Uprising is a well-built commander precon. What makes it truly unique is its complexity. Cascade is not a simple mechanic, and building around it, not so simple either. I can confidently say that of the five Commander 2016 precons, this is the most complex and difficult to play out of the box, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't play it. It's a great buy, the strategy's crazy fun, and the deck includes a number of solid staples for a multitude of strategies. Mainly blue-red based strategies, but still, the deck comes packed with tools. It's a great deck. Now, oh man, we have to talk upgrades, and this is, this is not going to be easy. Yidris is a bit unique. The other commanders we've looked at before all have, they all have various uses. You can build a few different types of strategies around them. Yidris? You can build a million different Yidris decks with different goals, different tools. It's basically a nightmare trying to figure out all of them. Therefore, in the upgrade section, we're going to focus on upgrading the precon and then a few choice strategies that I think Yidris fits best with. All right, let's do this thing. If we're trying to upgrade the precon itself, let's begin with Yidris. Notice his trigger whenever he deals combat damage to a player. That's right. If you deal double strike damage, that's two instances of Cascade. Giving all your spells cascade, cascade, it's just brutal. Also, extra combat steps will be sufficient as well. Think Seize the Day, World at War, Berserker's Onslaught, Blood Mist, you know, need stuff like that. Granting multiple instances of cascade will steer the game out of control quickly. If you want to make the discard portion of the deck stronger, I suggest Mind Grind, Mortivor, Jace's Archivist, and Fate Unraveler. Make them draw more, discard more, and hurt them while doing both. Feels good. Last upgrades to the precon itself, we're looking at consistency upgrades. Things like Solemn Simulacrum, Sakura Tribe Elder, Shardless Agent for Hilarity, and Maul Drifter to abuse Cascade even more. It's good stuff. Now, it's time to talk other Yidra strategies. There are tons running around, but I honestly think the most competitive and most ridiculous is Storm. The goal is to cast a ton of spells in one turn off of a bunch of Cascade triggers from Yidris, and then win with Tendrils of Agony, Graveshot, Aetherflux Reservoir, or something like Tide Spout Tyrant. The goal is to go off by cascading card draw spells into more card draw spells, into mana ram spells, into more card draw spells. We're looking at stuff like High Tide and Cabal Ritual to keep us cycling through draw spells like Mana Morphos and Impulse. It's the entire deck. Looking to draw cards until you have the mana and Storm Count to do something crazy. Now, of course, this isn't the entire deck, and the cards that make up the Storm deck can vary, but this is generally what you're going to be doing if you go down that road. Storm can be a lot of fun, but it's also very competitive. And when you have Yidris down on turn 4 at the latest, I doubt all your opponents will have something that can effectively block a 5-4 Trampler. Just saying. Next to Storm, Yidris' best fit? Hypergenesis. 
Basically, you're going to want to run a bunch of 1 mana cost spells and no other 0 mana cost spells, forcing Yidris' Cascade to hit Hypergenesis. All you need to make this work is something to set Yidris off, then a bunch of huge crap in your hand. Want some suggestions? I thought you'd never ask. Blightsteel Colossus, Darksteel Colossus, Original Kozilek, Original Ulamog, hmm, that can't be it, right? You know, let's keep going. Jingataxius, Shuldred, Avenger of Zendikar, Consecrated Sphinx. Do you see how much fun you could be having? And honestly, it really isn't that difficult to set up. Get a Yidris trigger, cast a 1 mana cost spell, boom, winning. Best part? You don't even need just Hypergenesis. As many have pointed out already, you could cast Lotus Bloom for free, or Ancestral Vision, or Living End. The deck's actually pretty easy to build overall and won't be that expensive. Could be a target for a budget commander deck tech. Huh. I'll keep that in mind. There are a ton of other directions you can take Yidris in, but we'd be here forever if I went over all of them. I gotta say, Entropic Uprising might be the most dynamic and interesting of the Commander 2016 precons. Not only is Yidris himself powerful and flexible, but the deck can pivot really easily to other archetypes and it includes a number of highly played cards in the format. This is exactly what you want out of a product like this. I'm supremely impressed. But let me know what you think. Is Entropic Uprising a deck that you've already bought? Considering buying it, what are your thoughts on the entire series? A favorite new commander? New partner commander you're looking into? I'd love to hear what you have to say. Be on the lookout for more commander and non-commander content coming to you real soon. As always, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. This video was brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com and Tropic Uprising knocked it out of the park as far as I'm concerned. If you don't have a local game store near you and you need these decks on the cheap, TCG Player has your back. For $27 shipped, you can get Entropic Uprising right now. Super easy, fair price, way cheaper than Target or Walmart, so don't even think about going there. You want a great deal, it's right here. Hope you enjoy.